Uh, good morning, River Church. How you guys doing? Good morning. Good morning. Awesome. Um, man, I'm excited to be here. I think I say this every single Sunday whenever I do preach, but man, I love you guys a lot. I care about you. And uh, yeah, and I'm, uh, like I said, I'm excited, excited to be here. Uh, before we start, I want to I pray for us. <clears throat> Jesus, we thank you for this time that you've given us to meet together. Uh, we thank you for your word and that we are able to uh, learn from it and grow from it and become more like you uh, through it, Lord. And Lord, I just pray over our hearts and our minds uh, over the next uh, hour, 45 minutes. Um, Lord, I just pray that, that you are glorified and, and, and we grow uh, in your image and, and, and we are uh, we are receptive, Lord. I pray that we hear what you want us to hear, um, and I pray that we grow because of it, Lord. Uh, we love you, Jesus, and we pray these things in your sweet name. Uh, amen. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so today's sermon is a pretty practical sermon. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 39, uh, and again, today's sermon is, is really practical. Okay, it's, uh, if you can see from the title of our sermon, uh, it is run, run from sin, right? Now that could, be, that could be it, right? We could stop there, we could, we could go home, we could be done for the day. Um, but, but as far as what we're going to be talking about, it's pretty practical, okay? Run from sin. Um, but it's also, this, the, the topic, the stuff that we're going to be talking about today is very heavy stuff, right? It's, it's uh, and, and we'll see it here in just a little bit, but it's very heavy. Uh, it's somewhat stuff that people don't usually feel comfortable talking about. And so, uh, even though it's a very practical sermon, it's also a very heavy sermon. So, um, yeah, I just pray that, and I, my hope is uh, that we're, we're able to take from it and grow from it and, and, and look a little bit more like Jesus because of it. Um, and so, and so, yeah, uh, today we'll be in Genesis chapter 39. Um, we're, we're just basically going to get straight into it. Uh, but before, before we start reading the passage, I want to talk about Joseph. And so if you've been with this the past, I don't know, a few weeks, we've been going over the story. We've been, we, we've been doing the book of Genesis for like a year already. Uh, the past few weeks, we've been going through the story of Joseph. <clears throat> if you look at if you look at the book of Genesis, it kind of charts these different characters throughout. And, and Joseph is the final, the final story that is really recorded and emphasized uh, in Genesis. And so that's, that's where we are. Um, that's where we're going to be at today, right? Um, <clears throat> so the last time, so, so last Sunday, if you guys were here, uh, in the middle of this Joseph story was the story of Judah, right? Um, seems like it was kind of out of the middle of nowhere, but it, it had its unique purpose. I'm not going to get into that today. Pastor Andre talked about it uh, last week, but it had its unique purpose in setting up the birth line of Jesus, right? Uh, but today we're going to continue on back up with the story of Joseph, okay? Um, now there are a few things to remember about Joseph, right? Uh, Joseph was, was the young one, right? He was the young brother, the youngest uh, at the time, right? He was the annoying brother. I was talking to Lise uh, about it earlier this week, and I was like, yeah, Joseph did like, like he was doing everything right, right? And she's like, yeah, he was super annoying. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, but that's who he was. He was the young brother who thought he knew it all, right? Uh, he was his dad. His dad was Jacob. He was his dad's favorite. His dad loved him. Um, and, 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 and because of that, his brothers, they didn't like him so much, right? They, they, did, they were jealous of him. <clears throat> uh, they, they hated him. They disliked him because he acted as though uh, he was superior to his brothers, right? Uh, if you recall the story from a few weeks back, um, he had a, a few dreams, and in those dreams, right, uh, he, he, he had his dream that his brothers uh, were going to bow down to him and that his, his parents were going to bow down to him, right? And he comes back and he, he, tells, he tells his family this story, and, and everybody... Everybody there thinks he's, uh, he's tripping, right? Um, everybody thought he was crazy, but his brothers were just like, man, I want to I kill this guy. We're going, we're going to kill him. We're going to take him away, and we're going we're gonna to put an end to this because I'm tired of Joseph. 
right? And so all the brothers get together and, 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 and they want to kill him. And his, the oldest brother, Reuben, is like, hey guys, I hate Joseph just as much as you guys do, but killing him, that's a little extreme, man. I didn't sign up for this. And so what they ended up doing is they ended up selling him away, right? They sell him off. And then they go back to their parents. The brothers go back to Jacob and tell him that Joseph is, has passed away. Um, but, Joseph, uh, but Joseph is sold off into slavery. In Genesis chapter 37, which is the last time we saw Joseph before last week, right? He was sold into uh, to Potiphar's house. So Potiphar was an officer of Pharaoh and he was a captain of a garden. And jo he was an Egyptian man. And Joseph was sold into uh, this household, into slavery under uh, this Egyptian man. Okay, and that's, and that's where the story picks up today. So if you guys have your Bibles, we're going to be in Genesis chapter 39. Uh, we're going to go verses 1 through 12. <clears throat> We'll have it projected up here on the screen. Also. It says, Now Joseph had been brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, had bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man. And he was in the house of of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. Everything he did, he was, he was successful, right? Verse 4, So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him. And he made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of, of the land, put him in charge of everything, right? Verse 5, uh, from the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field. <clears throat> so he left all that he had in Joseph's charge and because of him, he had no concern about anything but the food that he ate. We're going to pause right there. Okay, so this is really important, guys. All right, what, what, what is happening here, right? So Joseph, right, this favored son, the son that, that his, daddy, uh, his daddy just absolutely loves, right, has completely, like, fallen from grace. Like, what just happened? Sold into slavery, right? He sold, sold to Potiphar, uh, who is an Egyptian, But all that, all that he does is great, and Potiphar is the beneficiary of it. So what we see here, we see Joseph the Hebrew, right? Joseph the Hebrew blessing Potiphar the Egyptian. It's interesting, right? It's interesting. We're starting to see a picture of the, of the promise that God made to Abraham. Right? The Egyptians, right? It's just one family right now. As we go through the book of Genesis, you see it turns into all of Egypt. Right? But this one Egyptian family is being blessed because of Joseph, a Hebrew. Okay? We're starting to see an image of what God's promise to Abraham would look like. Now, obviously, this is, this is not the, uh, the complete, entire fulfillment of the promise, but it is a picture. It is something what it would look like. It's a glimpse, right? <clears throat> uh, going back to Genesis 12 so we can remember what this promise was. We'll go 12, and, and then we'll go to uh, chapter 22. I'll read here. It says, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That was Genesis chapter 12. Chapter 22 is when Abraham is 
He's this whole time he's been like from, from, from chapter 12 to 22, he's like, okay, God, like you're going to do this. I have no kids. Like, what are you doing? Right? How is this going to happen? Right? 22, uh, he has his son Isaac, and God has told him that he needs to sacrifice Isaac. He doesn't do it. He doesn't do it, and then the Lord's talking to him, and he says, And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. All right? Joseph, Joseph, Abraham's offspring, is living in an Egyptian's house. Right? In, in verse 5 it says, From the time that he made him overseer in the house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field, right? The Egyptians, people who are not Abraham's descendants, are being blessed because of Abraham's descendants, right? We talked about this a couple weeks ago, but God is going to do what God says that he is going to do. Man, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Okay, continuing on in, in verse 6. <clears throat> now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. And after a time, his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, because of, my, because of me, my master has no concern about anything in the house. And he has put everything that he has in my charge. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept anything, uh, kept back anything from me except you. Because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And as she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not listen to her, to lie beside her or to be with her. Verse 11. But one day, sorry, go back, Nolan, real quick. Uh, but one day, when he went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house was there in the house, she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and got out of the house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So what's, hap what's happening here, right? Joseph, right, he's a handsome dude, right? His, his boss's wife keeps making these sexual advances to him, right? He denies it. He says, now I'm, I'm good. And says, day after day after day after day, she continues to make these advances. And he continues to refuse. Now today we're going we're gonna to answer a question today. And, but before we answer this question, I just want to say, guys, that, that I am not above this, right? I'm not above falling into this. Me and my wife talk about this, right? I, I, I very well know from a rational standpoint all of the implications, and I would vow to myself that I would never do uh, what, what, what Joseph is being tempted to do, but I need to realize that I myself am not above this temptation. None of us None of us are above this. Man, I pray that, I pray that, that, that we never struggle with this, but, but we, are not, we are not above it. So the question we're going to answer today is, how can I avoid temptation? Right? How can I avoid sin? How can I avoid temptation? The passage that, that we read today focuses... Uh, mostly on infidelity, on cheating uh, with your spouse. But it is, it's all sin, right? Uh, but I'm sorry, but, but, but it's all about, it, it's talking about all sin and all uh, sorts of temptation, right? Idolatry. You, you idolize something in the place of God, right? Strife, jealousy, 
jealous of your neighbors, fits of anger, right? You have to get the last word. You know exactly what to say to piss that other person off, right? Finishing the conversation and you're walking away and that other person says something like, uh-uh, it's not, it's not happening that way. I'm going to get the last word, right? Fits of anger, drunkenness. I mean, these are, this is just a short list, but, but, but what we're going to talk about today and what we're going to try uh, and answer is how to fight all of this, okay? Uh, the first point is, you will be tempted. Satan will tempt you, right? Adam was tempted. Adam and Eve tempted in the garden. Right? Joseph was tempted. We just saw it right now. Joseph was tempted. It's a really interesting picture. The, the two bookends of the Bible, Adam falls, or bookends of Genesis, Adam falls to sin. Joseph refuses. That's a very interesting uh, idea. But, but Joseph was tempted. Right? Jesus was tempted. Jesus, Jesus fasted. He went into uh, the desert. Uh, he was fa uh, fasting for 40 days, and then he was tempted by Satan. You too will be tempted. You'll be tempted when you're feel, feeling pretty good about yourself, right? Things are going well. You can look at the story that we, we just read of Joseph. I mean, even though he had fallen from grace... He was working uh, in this person's house and everything that he was doing was happening. Everything that he was doing was successful. You will, you, he, you will be tempted, right? He could easily take the approach of saying, you know what? <clears throat> Everything's going well and it's because of me. I deserve this, right? I deserve to do, to be, uh, to get the things that I want. I can do what I want to do, right? feeling pretty good about yourself, you feel like you deserve everything, you will be tempted. But you will also be tempted when you're feeling pretty weak and vulnerable. And again, we saw from the story, Joseph was around people. He continued to deny these advances, right? Then it says he was by himself. He was alone. He was alone. You may be pretty, feeling pretty weak, pretty exhausted, maybe you're tired, right? I tend to, I tend to fall uh, into sin, I tend to do things that I don't want to do, especially when I'm tired. Right? Maybe things haven't been going your way for a long time and you are exhausted. Pretty weak and vulnerable. And I, I can see, I can see Joseph in this instance right here, just kind of rationalizing in his mind. You know what? It's us two alone. We're by ourselves, right? Justifying his reasons to go ahead and engage in this act. But he doesn't, right? He he does not. Okay, which, which leads us to our second point. And our second point is, Jesus is better. What is Joseph's main argument against Potiphar's wife? He says, he says how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Joseph understands that his sin is ultimately against God. He understands that the momentary high that the temptation will bring is not lasting. Right? Temptation, temptation doesn't worry, is not worried about your future. Temptation wants to give you the, the sweetness and the glory and all of those things immediately, up front, and it does not care about your future. <clears throat> it, the, the sin has a sweet, a sweet, the sweet taste of sin. There's a sweet taste to sin, but it leaves you with a sour aftertaste. 
It does not go away. Right? And Joseph recognizes, how can I do this against God? Jesus, God is better. Let's remember who Joseph is, right? Joseph is uh, the, 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 the son of Jacob. He's the grandson of Isaac, the great-grandson of Abraham. Right? He's probably, I would assume, uh, he, has, he has seen his, 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 his fathers, right? He's seen the Lord's faithfulness to them. And he knows, man, Jesus is good. God, the God of my fathers is good. How can I do this wickedness against God? And, and, and Jesus loves you and Jesus cares for you today, tomorrow, next week, next month, till the day that... Until the day you're, you're old and, and, and until the day you pass away, the Lord is constantly working on your life. And, and, and Joseph recognizes this. I, I, I would, and this is the most important point, guys. This second point, Jesus is better. I would encourage you guys. If, <clears throat> those of you, if you do not know Jesus, man... Whatever it is that you're putting in the place of Jesus is not going to fulfill you. It may feel good for a little while, but it'll leave you lacking. You'll find it lacking and you'll be wanting more. Understand that Jesus is meant to carry that weight in your life. Man, he loves you so much. So much. Jesus is better. Point number three, you're called, you're called to do greater things. Right? Jacob recognizes this. He is a descendant, right? We just talked about it. Descendant of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, right? He knows who God is, right? He knows who God is. He, he has seen God work through his, his, uh, his ancestors, his, his parents' life, and God has also spoken to him, right, uh, through his dreams. He's been having dreams that were from the Lord, right? He knows who God is. He's working through Joseph's life, and it is evident. You too, you too, me too, us, we, we are called to greater things. We are called to greater things, right? Through Christ, we, us, are to be a blessing to others. We are to be a blessing to people who do not know Jesus. All right? Just as Joseph was in this house of this, this foreign person, he was a blessing to him Right? We are to be a blessing to others. James says, uh, chapter 1 says, Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. <coughs> we, see this, we see this picture... Right? We see this picture of, of, of blessing others, blessing the people that nobody cares about. Okay? 2 Corinthians says, Therefore, if anyone, is, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against him, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. Right, we are to be a blessing to others. 
All right, not just not just people within our church community, and and though we should be loving towards everybody uh, in our church community, but everybody, that person at work that you can't stand, right? I work with a bunch of coaches, a bunch of men, and everybody's I'm like, oh my gosh, here's this guy again, right? Um, but to everybody, we gotta love these people. We gotta show them Christ. Man, when I came to Christ, one of the things that compelled me most was I was around a community of Christian people that just loved me well. It wasn't about the doctrine. It wasn't about the theology. It wasn't about all of this stuff making sense. It was like, man, these people love me. And they love me in a way that I have never experienced loved before. They blessed me in that way. We, us Christians, are to be a blessing to others. Right? Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. Last night, <clears throat> uh, I, we came up here, and usually whenever I preach, I'll come up here and practice my sermons a couple times. But anyway, uh, last night we were here, and uh, we, we, we were in the kids' wing. It was me, uh, my wife, and one of our friends, and we were talking about, <clears throat> we are having a good conversation, and my friend said, you know, people, people don't necessarily just start, just automatically, I'm sure they do, but naturally, they don't just naturally just come to Christ, right? She said, people have to feel a belonging, feel like they belong before they start to believe, right? I know that from the story earlier that I shared with you guys, that was my story, right? I felt belonging. I felt included. I felt like these people loved me. I was blessed, right? Open up your homes, guys. Open up your lives. When me and, when me and Lise, we bought our house, and I'm not trying to say this because I think like this is what you should do but when we bought our house man we went through every room and we prayed for this room we said Lord use this house for your glory and we try to we try to open our house up as often as we possible, possibly can I think a lot of y'all have been to our house open up your lives bless people bring them in show them how sweet Jesus is And the last thing that I want to talk to you guys about this morning, um, and this is the very practical part of the sermon, um, it's run from sin. Right? Run from sin. Flee sin. Oh, but Billy, I can't. I can't. My sin's got a grip on me. Get up. Walk out. Get out of there. Flee from sin. Right? If you look at the story of Joseph, you're, if you're able to fight sin, stand and fight. Right? We saw earlier in that chapter, he was standing, he kept refusing, he kept denying her advances. But if you can't fight, just run. It's easier. Right? I've, never, I've never fought, but I have heard people who uh, do boxing and stuff like that, they're like, dude, you go three minutes of like trying to beat somebody to where they cannot get up anymore. Like, that's exhausting. It's exhausting. I can't even do, like, jumping jacks for 30 seconds without being just done. Man. Fighting is hard. Run from sin. As we've seen, temptation tends to find you when you've let your guard down. You, you have kind of let your, your guard down Right, we see it in the, in the story of Adam and Eve. Right, they they were chilling under the tree. They could potentially let their guard down, and what happens? Sin comes creeping in. Right, temptation comes creeping in. In the story of Joseph, right, I mean he's somewhat hit rock bottom when he's weak, when he's alone. Who would have ever found out? It's alone. Run. Flee. Get out of there. Drastic times call for drastic measures. I know that sounds a little like 
ridiculous, but it's true, right? Jesus, if you think this is crazy, Jesus says, <clears throat> this is what Jesus says when, he, when he's telling people to stop sinning. In Matthew 5, he says, if your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. He says, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body go into hell. I'm not, I'm not setting up like an eye-gouging session in the back or anything like that. I'm just telling you guys to run from sin. Run. It's that important. Cut off your hand. Tear out your eye. This is, this is eternity. This is a relationship with Jesus at stake. <clears throat> Nike. I, I like Nike shoes, but most running shoes, they just released their new shoes, right? All their old shoes are on sale. Go buy some shoes and you can literally run, okay? What this looks like, this is super practical stuff. If I am going to say something, right, if I'm going to, to engage in something that I should not do, turn around and flee, right? Turn away from sin, turn away from temptation, turn towards Jesus. He is better. He is better. Run to Him. He is great and He is worthy to be praised. Run to Him. Why? Why should we run to Him? Because we believe God is who He says He is and He's going to do what He says that He is going to do. All right, 1 Corinthians 10 says this, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, He will also provide the way of escape that you may, that you may be able to endure it. Get up. Leave the room, right? If, if you're being tempted, or maybe you're at work, and there is this person of, who has been flirting with you or Get up, leave the room, go to the restroom, go get some water. If you have to go get water 30 times a day, be that guy. It's that important. <clears throat> right? If maybe, maybe you struggle with, I don't know, maybe you struggle with uh, pornography in, in the solitude of your own bedroom. It's very similar to Joseph I'm telling you, get up, go outside, go for a walk. It's beautiful weather out. something. Turn away from that and turn towards Jesus. It's very practical. James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Run from sin. Understand that the Lord is using this temptation to shape you, to grow you. Turn from it. I could just one thing that I want to want to drive home the the big thing that I want you guys to see, right? If you love Jesus, and and that second point, if you think that Jesus is better, I get there. Sometimes you don't feel like He is better. Sometimes I don't feel like He is better. But when you're tempted and you know what you struggle with, man, just just walk away. Do something else. Do something. Turn from that. Walk towards Jesus. Pray to Jesus. Jesus, man, I really want to do that, but you are better, and even though I don't feel like you are right now, help me believe that, Lord.
Run from, run from sin. Run from temptation. Run to Jesus. Let's pray.